All right, so today's a special day. We have a 5-inch uh, lift kit for a uh, Chevy 3500 Express van. It's a road check in this case. We can put on a popular 190. So I got this from WellTech. It's got 3-inch uh, spindles for the front, another 2 inches of uh, spacers for the front. Then on the back, it's actually a 4-inch uh, uh, block lift. They didn't uh, feel that putting a 5-inch block on the back of the van was a good idea. So I uh, trusted their opinion on that. And uh, we could have gotten upgraded springs to put in the back instead, like leaf springs. But uh, because I live in Canada, I had to ship it to uh, a broker and then get it brought over the border. I didn't think that getting springs all the way from California was a good idea for me. So uh, if I need springs in the future, I'll know if the 4-inch lift is good enough and then I'll look into getting some springs made locally. So we'll take a, a look at what's in here. So this was shipped uh, twice and the box is kind of popped open on the end here, but otherwise it looks like things are pretty good shape. We got the uh, front pieces here. So there's no uh, manufacturer's marks on these. I'm not sure what the source is, but I decided to buy everything from one place and then know that it all works together, as opposed to trying to uh, piece together a lift kit from various sources. U-bolts. Looks like one of those broke off. Got the hardware for the U-bolts. So part number's on here, but uh, it's not too clear what it is. But it's a uh, 9 hardware. We've got the, the Fox shocks here. So these come valve for the road track, so I'm not sure if the part numbers are going to be useful for yourselves or not. And it's sort of part of the uh, work that WellTech has done is to figure out what parts work together. So if you catch a glimpse of the part number, that's all right. I will say that they're for a Hummer H3 for one of them. And The Chevy for the front. So they're a, a mix, so they've done their research to figure out what you need to use there. So take a look. Got this one thing I wasn't too excited about Fox shocks was that they don't have gaiters on these. So this would be uh, facing down, so I guess you wouldn't want to fill up with dirt. You can see that in the picture or not. So it's a Fox 2.0 series shock. Comes with a sticker. Some kind of information there. Take a look at the front. I'll take some side-by-side uh, -side measurements of these compared to what's on the uh, van later and see how much longer these are because uh, with the spindle lift, I suppose you don't need them to be any longer. And then you put in this, and it's not super long either. So it might be just a regular length. So we'll take a look at that. There's uh, not much to say about the shocks. Other than I've got Bilstein's on the van right now. And they got about 100,000 miles on them, and they are worn out. I put a sway bar on the back of the van to kind of help with it. And it got it riding quite a bit better, but I know that putting new shocks on the van is going to help a lot. So I'm pretty excited about doing this. And then these are rebuildable where the Bilsteins are not. So if these were to wear out, I could send them off and get them done. Or if I wanted to change the, the performance in any way, 
Whereas the Bilsteins, you kind of have to take what they got. Sometimes they're too firm. So, actually, I think they're always too firm. They're never too soft. In I'm not sure what the expected lifespan of these are, if they could get a 100,000 miles out of them or not. I'm trying to think what's missing here. So the first box, I think it was about 30 pounds. Then this box was uh, 60 pounds. So in here, there should be these spindles and the, uh, the rear blocks. Now the spindles are uh, chromoly, according to what uh, I've seen on the internet. And I bought these as part of their stimulus package. Back in uh, March, I think they shipped them within a week of me ordering them. And then it took me a month to get them across the border, but that's, that was my decision to take my time. As it wasn't uh, well tech, that was an issue. And these are powder coated, as far as I understand. So I haven't gone through to see which parts are solid and which are not. You can see that they've welded through here to get better penetration. So they cut a window in there and welded around it. Lots of welding. You see in the videos that they TIG weld this. Obviously they take some parts that are machined to begin with. So these would not be usable for four wheel drive. There's no opening in them. But I, there's no plan for me to put four wheel drive on the van. Comes with a weld tech uh, sticker, some zip ties. For the brake lines, so that's one thing I don't understand why they don't thread a hole on here somewhere so you can actually attach your brake line to this as opposed to using zip ties. But uh, this thing is certainly heavy. I'm starting to think that there are no hollow parts in it. It's probably all solid. So it's got the taper on it. I gotta research which uh, direction the taper goes. Might have been riding against this on the, the trip. It's all pretty heavy stuff. There's a mark here, there's a mark on the back of the uh, spindle. So yeah, it's not plastic, not aluminum, it's uh, cast iron. So that's good. comes from. So it is uh, just shy of three and three quarter on one side, four inch on the long side. So I guess that's uh, four inch coming from the wider part of the paper. So I'll be getting lots of uh, before and after measurements on my vehicle as I do this job. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is putting on the uh, rear spacer blocks. So I think that'll make it easier to lift up the van on the front end without being on a big kind of crazy angle. So that's my thought anyway. I know I can pop these out pretty quick. Whereas these will take a little bit more effort to do. So this is the other one. So these are nice tapered holes here. Looks like you can hit them with a sledge quite a few times. You don't need to worry about caving these in. I'll get the camera closer here in a second.
It's already at the 10 minute mark. So being a Canadian, I was kind of worried that these things might rust, but after seeing them now, seeing them powder coated, I'm uh, fairly relieved. I don't think it's going to be a problem. It's not just made out of cheap, mild steel. Like uh, Jeremy mentions in his video, it's uh, chromoly. So I think uh, a little bit of preventive maintenance here and there should be alright. We don't use the camper in the winter, but if we ever need to bring it down to the States for a winter trip, we would have to drive it briefly in the snow. So there's a left and a right for this, obviously, so you can get your uh, calipers on the correct side of the wheel. So, not worried about that, those are going to be good. Our vehicle is a, a highway vehicle, so we just want to be able to travel at 80 miles an hour maximum. So these don't need to be two inches thick to get you a two inch lift because they're halfway up in the suspension. I suppose it would be about there compared to the control arm. So you get double the uh, thickness from the uh, that. So if you were to get longer springs as an example, and you put in four inch longer springs, you end up with like an eight inch lift, so don't do that. I've seen people do that in the past. I'm glad that these aren't like uncoated, not coated material. These are, but that's, that's pretty common for fasteners. I'm not too worried about that. So that's good. Then we got the, the Fox shocks. So I guess we'll uh, wrap up the video here and then the next video is going to be me putting these in and doing some initial measurements and then uh, I think uh, about a week later we'll be putting these in depending on uh, what my availability is. So thank you for watching.